video reporting presentation. In this video, we will be sharing about the badminton history, facilities, and equipments. So if you want to learn, please keep on watching. Good afternoon, class. So today, we are going to report about the history and origin of the badminton. But before that, we will know what is badminton. Badminton is a racket sports play either in singles, in doubles, or in mixed doubles who take positions on the opposite halves of a rectangular court that is divided by a net. So, it is also played outdoor or in order as casual recreational activity. It demands excellent fitness and requires aerobic stamina, agility, speed, and precision. We usually doing this, especially kapag free time natin. Ginagawa natin siyang outdoor, parang uh, bonding na rin natin from family and friends. And our aim, uh, the aim de, uh, there is to to improve our cardiovascular, to have a fit, fit and healthy body, and also have fun. So next is we will tackle about the history and origin. So. So in the middle 18th century, the beginning of the badminton can be traced in British India, where it was created by British military officers stationed there. Early photographs shown Englishmen adding a net to the traditional English game of battle door and shuttlecock. Initially, balls of wall were preferred by the upper classes in windy or wet conditions, but ultimately the shuttlecock stopped. The game also came to be known as Pona, or now it is known as Pune. It was also taken by a retired officer's back to England where it developed and rules were out. As early as 1860, Isaac Spratt, a London toy dealer, published a booklet of Badminton Battle Door, a new game. But unfortunately, no copy to survive. The new sport was definitively launched in 1873 at the Badminton House, Gloucestershire, owned by the Duke of Beaufort. During that time, the game was referred to as the Game of the Badminton, and the game's official name became Badminton. In 1887, the sports was played in England under the rules that prevail in British India. The basic regulations were drawn up in 1887. In 1893, the Badminton Association of England published the first set of rules according to this regulation, similar to today's rules, and officially launched badminton in a house called Dunbar at 6 Waverley Grove, Portsmouth, England on September 13 of that year. They also started the All England Open Badminton Championship, who was the first badminton competition in the world in 1899. The International Badminton Federation, or IDF, known as Badminton World Federation, was established in 1934 with Canada, Denmark, England, France, Netherlands, Ireland, New Zealand, Scotland, and Wales as its founding members. They also govern the international badminton and develops the sports globally. While set out in England, competitive badminton in Europe has traditionally been dominated by Denmark, Indonesia, South Korea, and Malaysia, are among the nations that, that have consistently produced world-class players in the past few decades and dominated competition on the international level, with China being the most dominant in recent years. What are the dimensions of the court? Let's take a look of what dimensions are for standards of badminton. <laughs> One of the facilities of the badminton is first is the court. Badminton courts are rectangular and are divided in half by a center net. Regardless of the game type, courts are usually marked for both singles and doubles games. The badminton court shall be a rectangle laid out with lines of 40 mm wide, preferably in white or yellow color. Guideline for single play. The single sideline is marked 1 and 1 and a half feet from the edge of the outer boundary, which is the double sideline. During a rally, a player can hit the shuttle from any position on his side from the net. The single line is 18 inches closer to the middle of the court than the double lines. Back, boundary line, and long service line for singles. 
The back boundary line is the same for singles and doubles play. It is the outermost back line on the court. The serving area in which the single serve must be delivered. Each side of a badminton court has a right and left service court for singles. Each single service court is bounded by the short service line, the center line, the single side line, and the back boundary line. Long service line for doubles. The long service line for doubles is marked two and one and a half feet inside the back boundary line. The double service court is slightly different. They are wider because they use the outside side line. Remember, double court is wider and they are shorter because they use the inside back line. This is what badminton singles and doubles court space looks like. When you first look at a badminton court, you could be forgiven for thinking it has too many lines. This is because the court is marked up for singles and doubles, which use slightly different court sizes. Overall court dimension. The overall court dimension of badminton court is 20 feet by 44 feet or 6.10 meter and 13.40 meter. The lines along these measurements mark the sidelines for doubles, double play, and long service for single play. Next, we have the net line. The net line marks the middle of the court where the net is placed, creating a 22 feet by 20 feet or 6.7 meter and 6.1 area on each side of the net. The net provides a height barrier so all the shuttle must pass over the net for the rally to go on. Next we have the short service line. The short service line is marked 6 feet 6 inches from the center line. The area inside of the short service line is also called the non-valley zone. The serve must reach the short service line to be legal. Next, we have the center line. The center line is the line that divides the court from the short service line to the back boundary line. This line delineates from the left, the right service court. No game is complete without that equipment required. Without that essential equipment, a sport is deemed worthless. Now, let us have take a look at that essential equipment. Net is in a rectangular shape made from string used to distinct or separate the two sides of badminton court. So, nylon ang the most common type materials para sa badminton net. So, the measurement of badminton net with a height of 1.55 meters with the center edge of 1.52 meters and then the width is 6.10 meters and the net itself without the pole is 76 centimeters so kahit na kahit na single ang gina play the net post will always be in a double sideline hello everyone good day today i'm gonna discuss one of the equipment of badminton, which is the rocket. So I have here a sample of rocket. This one is an aluminum rocket. And later on, I'm gonna discuss you, discuss to you the different types of rocket. But before we dig deeper into the rocket itself, um, we're gonna go to the history of badminton. So did you know that um, badminton was played first played in 1873 in England. So, the roots of the sport can be traced to ancient Greece, China, and India. And it is closely re related to the old children's game named Battle Door and now um, called Shuttlecock. Battle Door was one of the older names for badminton and it literally means a bat or a paddle. In ancient times, a battle door was a wooden paddle that was used for washing clothes as well as for beating and steering. Clearly, the implementation was adopted so that it could be used for the sport. So, dati daw, nag-start siya. Di lang isang uh, kahoy pa siya. And then, now, um, as time goes by, nag-evolve na yung rocket into different types of materials. 
Uh, now, let's proceed to the definition. So, rocket has a handle frame and an open hook. And these rockets are used for hitting a shuttlecock in games. The objective of the game of badminton is to hit a small device that resembles a rubber ball with a ring of feathers attached to it. It's called a shuttle or a shuttlecock. Back and forth across a race net using a rocket. Next, now I'm going to discuss to you the different parts of the rocket. So I've attached a picture with its own uh, different labels. So first we have the head. This is the head. And then we have the throat. And then we have the shaft. This one. And then the handle. This. And we have the frame. The overall length of the rocket, which is measured from tip of the head to the bottom of the handle, cannot exceed 680 millimeters or 26.5 inches. The objective of the game is to score by hitting um, the shuttlecock itself. The string area is made up of nylon or carbon fiber string that is interwoven to form the face of the rocket. Its dimensions according to BWF rules must not exceed um, 280 millimeters in length or 220 millimeters in width. Next, we have the frame. The frame is the body of the rocket. The frame consists of the string area, shaft, throat, and the head of the rocket. This one. The length of your frame shouldn't be above 680 millimeters and 230 millimeters or about 9 inches. Next, we have the head. Head is a piece of material that holds the string in position. It can have a rounded or oval shape. This one is, uh, no, is rounded shape. And it has a lot of holes on its perimeter where the strings are laced together. As you can see, these are the holes that um, attach together with the string. Next, we have the throat. The throat connects the head to the shaft of the rocket. This one is your throat. It might be a separate triangular piece that's um, at the base of the head or might be integrated into the rocket's rocket head itself. So as you can see dito, uh, naka-attach na siya mismo. So wala siyang separate na triangular piece. And then next we have the shaft. The shaft is located in the center of the badminton rocket. This one. This one is the shaft. They usually come in two types, the flexible and the rigid one. Manufacturers an anonymously agreed to categorize rocket shaft as flexible, medium, or stiff. The shaft connects the head or throat to the handle. This one. It connects to the handle and to the head. And then next, we have the handle. Handle connects to the shaft and used to hold the rocket. A grip is a way of holding the rocket in order to hit shots during a match. And then handle is covered with a material called the grip. So handle and grip are two different uh, materials. I mean two different uh, objects in the handle. Pero nasa isang position lang sila. And then there are two types of grips. The towel grips are good for absorbing moisture. But maybe you change frequently kasi nga... Diba kapag towel grips, um, iba yung texture niya at saka mas pinakapitan siya ng uh, pawis. And then next, we have the synthetic grips. Yun yung uh, lesser absorbent and more durable. Kasi hindi mo na kailangan siya na palitan every now and then. Kasi hindi na naman nag absorb ang pawis ko. And then next, we have the material. I will discuss to you the different material of the rocket. First thing, we have the wood. Wood is heavy in size and weight and players were unable to hit the sweet spot on this rocket kasi nga mabigat siya. The wooden rockets were in durable and were expensive to produce. Because of this fact, players refused this rocket and went for ones made of uh, more sturdier material. So yun, parang uh, think uh, 
practically na lang. So, hindi masyadong ginagamit yung wood na yun. Kasi mabigat talaga siya. And costly siya. And then, uh, this is a sample of a wooden rocket. So, everything is wood. Maliban na lamang dun sa string niya. And then next, we have the steel. The steel provided strength and durability and was cheaper to create than wood. It took less manufacturing time creating the rockets than wooden counterparts. Now you'll see steel rockets being mixed with other metals such as carbon, iron, and magnesium. So, on steel is mas magaan at saka mas durable siya gamitin compared sa wooden and mas cheaper yung price compared sa wooden. This is a sample of a steel rocket. Next, we have the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is also known as graphite fiber. It's a crystalline version of carbon fiber that can be weaved or twisted together. Carbon fiber is lightweight while still having added strength. So this is a sample of a um, rocket. Next, we have the aluminum rocket. So as you can see, uh, this rocket is an aluminum one. After the development of steel rockets, aluminum rockets, uh, aluminum rockets were beginning to be manufactured. While this material isn't as durable as steel, it's more lightweight and it's great if you need extra mobility during games. Plus, it has more power than exerting a force on the shuttle cap. You should look into aluminum rockets if you want something that's fast and has a larger sweet spot for returning services. So this one is another example of a aluminum rocket, but it has a double shaft compared to this one, my sample. Hello everyone, today I'm going to discuss one of the equipments being used in playing badminton, and that is the shuttlecock. So, shuttlecock, or referred to many as a birdie or a shuttle, is the equipment being thrown back and forth over the net of opponent's side through the use of badminton racket. So, I have here an example of a shuttlecock, and this is the synthetic one. So, as you can see, it is made up of a conical shape with a hard cork at its edge or at its tip, and basically, it is consists of a head and a tail. So in my example, the hard cork serves as a head and the nylon material serves as the tail, but it can also be a feather. So this is the specifications of a shuttlecock. A shuttlecock can weigh around 4.74 to 5.50 gram and its tail is 62 to 70 millimeter in length and the diameter of the cork or the head is 25 to 28 millimeter. So that makes the whole shuttlecock approximately around 3 inches in length. So there are two varieties of shuttlecock to choose when playing a badminton. So there's a feather shuttlecock and a synthetic shuttlecock. So from what I have said earlier, a shuttlecock is consists of a head and a tail, right? So in case of feathered shuttlecock, its tail is formed and developed and made up of 16 overlapping feathers of either goose or duck tail feather which is inserted into the head or a cork and secured with a thread. Now this type of shuttlecock is mostly used by professional athletes and in serious games because feathered shuttlecocks has better control in flight rather than the synthetic ones. But one of the cons of using feathered shuttlecock is that the feathers are brittle so the shuttlecock tends to break easily and in games it is often changed and replaced several times. So by that reason, synthetic shuttlecock have been developed. Now, synthetic shuttlecock literally has the same specification as a feathered shuttlecock has but it only differs on the material used on the tail because the material used on the tail of a synthetic shuttlecock is consists of either plastic or nylon material. So one of the advantages of using synthetic shuttlecock is that it is cheaper and has a longer durability than the feathered one and it is also best used for beginners and for recreational games. When playing badminton, there are quick changes in direction. 
So wearing proper footwear can help you limit your risk of leg or foot injuries. So welcome to this slide and I'm going to discuss to you about the badminton shoes. Okay, so I have here some reasons of why should we have standard badminton shoes. So for safety, for comfortable, for if most efficient and some will say na um, badminton shoes should be lightweighted. Yes, tama lahat tong mga reasons na to why should we have a standard badminton shoes, okay? But the reason or the most reason behind why should we have standard shoes or playing badminton is that to maximize performance while minimizing injuries, di ba? Kasi kaya nga bawal maglaro ng nakachinelas, di ba? So, a good pair of badminton shoes should provide good grip, cushioning, and some flexibility at the forefoot. Okay, so we have, but we still have things to consider na paano tayo makahanap ng standard badminton shoes. So I have here three things that we should have to consider of looking for a standard badminton shoes. So the first thing that we are going to um, inspect is the sole of the shoes. Okay, so hindi kaluluwa ha. Ito yung nasa baba, ayan, na nandito sa picture. Sole of the badminton shoes is a fundamental part of our choice. But the purpose of the sole is to provide good traction and grip on the court. So, titignan natin dito kasi guys, sa ilalim. Ito kasi yung nakadikit sa um, sa court. So, kapag pag ginamit natin ito siya, hindi siya rubberized na didikit dun sa cemento. Most especially kapag may mga medyo basa. Ano. Okay, dito kasi tayo makakakita na kung maganda ba yung maganda ba yung pag-touch niya sa ground habang naglalaro tayo or habang nilalaki namin siya. So, um, isa pa na reason bakit natin kailangan tignan yung soul it because it, uh, ito yung number one na na for prevent, to prevent injuries. ano Because of the need to be lightweighted and flexible, badminton shoes tend to have thin soul. Okay. So, this is a good sign that the shoes will perform what is required. Uh, the best material for sole is gum rubber to achieve good traction. So, good traction talaga yung um, uh, relation nila no, ng shoes. Next is the ventilation. So, ventilation, uh, akala nyo yung mga butas-butas sa, sa sapatos natin is style lang yan. Well, guys, meron siyang um, purpose. So, titignan natin yung ventilation ng badminton shoes. Ang reason kasi, or ang purpose kasi niyan, is para malabas yung polluted air, yung um, to prevent blisters, in short, no? to prevent blisters. So, kapag naglalaro tayo, meron talaga yung mapawis ang paa, or um, nag-oil na dyan sa ilalim, like yuck. So, dito sa ventilation, ang purpose niya is, ito yung uh, sumisingaw. Dito sumisingaw yung ano natin dyan sa ating mga paa, ano? A good pair of badminton shoes will have proper ventilation and reliable sole which will prevent blisters and at its feet condition. Okay. Next is caution. Okay. Caution naman is ito na yung um, greater impact, to be greater impact, loading, with your foot hits the pavement. So, yung caution, despite of lightness, kahit nasabihin natin na magaan yung badminton shoes, yung magandang badminton shoes pa rin should also have a good cautioning against impact. So, good cautioning against impact will ensure that your knees do not suffer needlessly. So, maganda yung the way na mag-bounce, the way na gamitin natin, as long as we are comfortable with the shoes. No? Maganda yung good cautioning that would be a better badminton shoes for you. So, yeah, that will end my presentation. But I have some reminders. Okay, do not purchase a shoes with metal or rubber shoes because this could dig into the ground and result in injury to your knees or ankles when changing in direction. Because there are some shoes that are like or grabe yung yung tagal sa court, hindi siya madulas or hindi siya lightweighted. So, kailangan mapumili tayo ng magandang badminton shoes as we play badminton. And, with these tips, um, we are confident that 
you'll be able to make a better and more informed choice of buying shoes. So that ends my report and thank you.